Good morning. Welcome to Highland Christian Church. I hope you're having a blessed Memorial Day weekend. I have a couple of announcements to make. First of all, the Memorial Day observance is Monday, May 25th at 10 a.m. at the Veterans Wall of Honor in the shaded area. Also, I'd like to announce that we have a tentative date to reopen for face-to-face -face worship, which is August the 2nd. So put that on your calendar. We look forward to it. To getting back together it all together let us begin with a word of prayer eternal God Lord of life on this day of remembrance we gather to give you thanks for the lives of people who whose passing reveals to us the value of the life that you have granted as we recall their lives teach us to number our days that we may use wisely the treasure of time given to us let us remember those who like our Lord Jesus willingly gave their lives for the sake of others. Doctors and nurses who have served on the front lines of the pandemic. Firefighters who braved the terrors of flames. Peace officers slain in the line of duty. Soldiers, sailors, and flyers who sacrificed their futures for our freedom. Ordinary citizens who instinctively reacted with heroism in a crisis. Martyrs who valued truth and justice above life itself. Grant us a measure of their passionate dedication to life, that we may face our own challenges with courage and resolve. Let us pause in sober remembrance of those who died too soon, with so much living yet undone, the victims of disease, the casualties of careless accidents, the victims of crime, those who by their own hand ended their life that they could no longer bear. Lord, teach us to number our days, that we may fully appreciate the time we have. Let us remember thankfully those who just by their being showed us the power of faith, hope, and love, 
for mentors and teachers, for grandparents, aunts and uncles, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, and mutual friends and lifelong companions, rich through the emptiness left by their passing, to draw us more closely to you. Teach us to number our days so that we do not fuss over unimportant things or delay expressing our love and respect. Grant us strength to honor the memory of our loved ones by living each day remaining to us with courage and compassionate service to others. Grant us grace to entrust our loved ones to your undying love until that day when all hearts are mended, all families united, and all lives restored. These things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Again, he returned thanks. And then he gave the cup to the disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink in your remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you observe the Lord's death until he comes again. Body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ poured out for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for this table and for these elements. We are thankful that you went to the cross for us. We are thankful for all that you mean to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, boys and girls of all ages. I wanted to welcome you this morning. I brought 
a couple of things to show you. There, it's a, a test of our faith and our hope. I brought a chain and I brought a ring. Now, this ring is not really on the chain, but it looks like it is when you have it up here like that. But the real trick, what I hope will work, I have faith that it will work, is that if I drop this ring, it will actually be on the chain. Wow, look at that, it is on the chain. If we have a little bit of faith and a little bit of hope, it's amazing what we can do. I want you to have faith and hope this week that someone will come along that you can show your love to. Have a good day, thank you for coming.
Our scripture this morning is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of persons we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution you received the word with joy inspired by the Holy Spirit so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord had sounded forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak about it. For the people of those regions report about us what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve in a living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Who will rescue me? That's the cry of Penny, a little girl lost and alone, kidnapped and forced from the only home she'd ever known, the orphanage. Stripped of the only hope she'd ever held, the hope of being adopted. Penny reached out the only way that she knew how, through a note in a bottle. Like any well-crafted movie or novel, Disney has a way of drawing us into the emotions of the movie's character right from the very beginning. You remember the opening of Up? In less than four minutes, Disney told the emotional story of the life and love between Carl and Ellie without a single word being said. It's the trigger which completely sets up Carl's life and the rest of the movie. In most Disney movies, and in most of the story arcs of the great movies and plays, we see an enactment of John 16, 33, where Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble, but take courage, for I have conquered the world. Life is running a long time, and then trouble comes. Something happens, and it changes everything, just like in real life. Someone once flippantly said, if Shakespeare was correct, if all the world's a stage and we're just players upon the stage, and the life throws you a curve or serves up lemons, just think to yourself, plot twist and keep going. Now that might work for a few, but most of us need more than that. Acknowledging that there's a plot twist doesn't really heal the hurt. It doesn't mend the broken heart nor does it offer up any assistance in plotting our way through the twist. The real story in any story, especially our own, is how the character reacts to the critical moment when the trouble comes and everything changes. Sometimes it seems that the event has him pinned to the mat, never to get up again, never to experience life. And when that happens, the story is pretty much over. There's nothing left to tell because they've just given up. But in some stories, that trigger, that conflict, that trouble in their life sets them on a quest. In the moment of that quest, the grace of God seems to be working. That person hears God's call, maybe, maybe not audibly, but they hear the words that echo the promise of Jesus. Somewhere in the midst of the trouble, they awaken to the hope of new life or better life. They awaken to a life in which good triumphs over evil. Life triumphs over death. Love triumphs over loneliness. Hope triumphs over despair. Somewhere within the story, the main character somehow finds the hope 
and the courage Jesus offers. If not through Jesus, then through some Christ figure in the story. And when they do, like with the resurrection of Jesus, the story takes on a whole different shape, usually deeper and greater than the storyline before. Last week, we heard how Paul defined love for the Corinthian church. He reminded them of its qualities and reminded us that while faith, hope, and love abide, the greatest of them is love. Most scholars believe that Paul's letter to the Corinthian church were written later in his ministry. They also believe that the passage for this morning, this letter to the church in Thessalonica, was one of the first, if not the first, letter written to one of, the, of his fledgling churches. What difference does that make? I want you to listen to part of that passage again. Notice how Paul weaves his idea of faith, hope, and love with the greatest being love in verse 3. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all of you and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before God, our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that the grace of God can transform every life that receives it. That every person who desires can grow daily in holiness. Our purpose is to light a fire in the hearts and souls of men and women so that they can continue to grow and mature. Paul was deeply influenced by the work of faith in the lives of, Thessal of the Thessalonian church. He saw how the word of the Lord had sounded forth from the Thessalonian church. The Thessalonian church was one of great influence and impact because the very lives of the people showed their work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness, steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. I think that's what we desire of our church. We hope it would mirror the Thessalonian church, and I think it does. Maybe not as effectively as we could be, but we still mirror those early beliefs and actions. You see, we realize that there are people like Penny in the world, people through no fault of their own, except for where and when they were born, people who have never heard the good news that there is someone who wants to rescue them. We also realize that there are those who have heard that the good news. They have heard it, but somehow they have drifted or turned away, and they have no idea of how to get back. They've traveled down the wrong road for so long. They've been separated from God for so long that the road they're on seems normal, or at least almost normal. Almost because deep in their spirit, deep in their soul, they know it's not. They long for something more. Their cry is like Penny's. I'm lost at sea without a friend. This journey will it ever end? Who will rescue me? For some of these people, the labor of love is really a labor to discover love. They truly feel lost at sea without a friend. There are people everywhere who can't give love because they've never experienced love. They, there are those who did experience love but the person they chose to love didn't love them back. There are those who, for whom love is a commodity, something to be bartered or traded or sold. How are they supposed to perform a labor of love if they've never experienced true love? Well, once they experience unconditional love, their lives are changed forever. Many years ago, there was a woman by the name of Granapus Dranifus was also known as Rose. She was a poor woman who lived in Albania. Rose and her, and her husband opened their home to the poor and hungry in their town. Whenever one of Rose's daughters would ask, who's this new visitor at our table? Rose would always answer, it's a relative. Rose's daughters grew up believing that they came from an enormous extended family. Even after Rose's husband died and the family was plunged into poverty, Rose found a way to give food to the hungry 
and help to the destitute. One of Rose's daughters, daughters was so greatly influenced by her mother's example of sacrificial love that this daughter, Agnes, grew up to be an advocate for the poor all over the world. She devoted her whole life to caring for those in need. You see, young Agnes grew up to be known better as Mother Teresa, the 20th century living example of Christ in the world. Mother Teresa became who she was because of the example of her mother's work of faith and labor of love. Her mother's example gave Mother Teresa steadfast hope that allowed her to become one of the rescuers. When we have faith and know the unconditional, of love, unconditional love of God and Jesus Christ in our lives, when our labor moves from being a labor, of, a labor to discover love to a labor of love, we can share with others. Then our work of faith and our labor of love will surround us and those around us with a steadfast hope. That hope will help us become rescuers as well. One of the things, one of the things every Disney movie leaves you with is a sense of hope. Without faith and without love, there can be no hope. Love gives feet to our faith and hands to hope. But what can hope possibly do? In one of the Chicken Soup for the Souls books, Dr. James Brown tells the story of a little five-year-old girl named Mary who had suffered a stroke. As they rolled her in for her MRI, Dr. Brown tried to imagine what she must be feeling. The left half of her body was now paralyzed. Earlier, she had been hospitalized for a brain tumor. She lost her father and mother and her home. All the staff wondered how Mary would react to the test. But she went into the MRI machine without protest. They started the test. Each imaging sequence required her to remain perfectly still for five minutes. That's hard for anyone, but can you imagine being a five-year-old? Dr. Brown says, about two minutes into the first sequence, we noticed that Mary's mouth was moving. We even heard her muted voice on the intercom. We stopped the exam and gently reminded her not to talk. She smiled and promised, I won't talk. We reset the machine and started over. Once again, we saw her facial movement and faintly heard her voice. What she was saying wasn't clear. The staff was getting a little impatient. They had put a busy schedule on hold in order to perform this MRI. See, Dr. Brown says, we went back in and slid Mary out of the machine. Once again, she looked at us with her crooked smile. She wasn't upset in the least. The technologist, perhaps as with a bit grumpy voice, said, Mary, you were talking again. That causes blurry pictures. But Mary smiled, and she replied, I wasn't talking. I was singing. You said no talking. <laughs> Dr. Brown said, we looked at each other, feeling a bit silly. Well, what were you singing? Someone finally asked. Mary replied, Jesus loves me. I always sing Jesus loves me when I'm happy. And a little child shall leave him. Isn't that what scripture says? What, test, what a testament to the love that Mary had experienced, the faith that she held, and the steadfast hope for the future which her experience of love and her heartfelt faith gave her. In the movie The Rescuers, the characters Bianca and Bernard are chosen to rescue Penny. They had no idea what they were getting into. They just knew someone was in trouble. It didn't make any difference if it was hard. It didn't make any difference if it drew them out of their comfort zone. Ever since the mouse Euripides pulled the thorn out of the paw of the lion and formed Rescue Aid Society, volunteers were going out to rescue others, even in the worst weather. Their motto was, through storm and rain and dark of night, we never fail to do what's right. I think, I think that this might be a parable for the church and what the church should be like. We ask ourselves, Whose job is it to rescue people like Penny? Whose job is it to hear the mournful cry of the lost and needy? The answer is simple. God has chosen us. Jesus has chosen each of us, not because of anything we do right or, or that we do well, 
but out of an everlasting love. God's unconditional love for us does not depend on what we do or do not do, what we say or do not say, what we have or do not have. God loves us and has chosen us, and it is that simple. Believing is not always easy, and doing is often hard, but then that is why the good news of Jesus Christ comes empowered by the Holy Spirit. You and I, the church, are the Rescue Aid Society established by Jesus and empowered by God's Holy Spirit. We are the rescuers. We want the world to know the love of Christ through our work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ so they will have the same thing. So that is our challenge. We are called to be rescuers in a world longing for someone to find them and love them for who they are. And that is the good news for today. and every one of you and give you his peace now and forevermore. Amen.